What's up everybody, Peter McCarthy here with a solo today uh, for blues rock lovers. Uh, this is Angus Young's Shook Me All Night Long, of course. And um, I love going through the solo with a lot of students that are coming together with the blues. I say blues, but I mean minor pentatonic and major pentatonic shapes. And uh, one really cool thing about it is that, you know, as you hear, it's, uh, it's there's nothing more than pentatonic scales going on, but it's uh, really handy for guys that are learning these tools, but they don't necessarily want to practice them or play them in their band against, you know, what we recognize as a traditional um, blues backdrop, 12-bar uh, blues. Now, the flip side of that is that if you do like everything and, uh, and you take a look at one of these solos, you can ap certainly apply this vocabulary and these tools to the 12-bar thing, and they'll sharpen up your 12-bar blues playing quite a bit as well. Uh, so we're going to play the G minor and the G major pentatonic notes. Nothing more going on. Uh, the, song is the, the three chords to the song are mainly G, D, and C. So uh, the first phrase is... <laughs> Okay, um, and as you can see, my hand didn't lead that what we call the first box or the first form of minor pentatonic. Slowly, you bend the fifth fret of the G string. Hold that, you ghost note play it again, and then you jump, you can flatten your finger out to the top strings third, B strings third, B strings eighth, and then, now, what I just did there was, uh, the reason why I stopped on that was, that's a bend of the fifth fret on the G string. But if you listen really close to what Angus is doing there, you don't hear the note, you don't hear the note go up and come down. There's this, um, it's called, I mean, a lot, a lot of times nowadays you'll see it notated as PB in tablature or notation. It's a pre-bent and you hear the release of the bend. So it's really subtle, but it, it, you know, it is different if you listen to it. So the difference would be, and that's the note coming up and down, or, and that's how I'm hearing it, is that you're hearing a fall off of the fifth fret, and then you release the third fret, and you play five on the D, five on the A string. And then, okay, and that's just coming right down, right? But you notice, again, another fi finer point where technique is involved is that you don't hear it sounding like this, do you? You hear more of a, right? And the only difference is that um, if your right hand were to say karate chop your guitar strings, right? And, uh, and and they're they're deadening them. <clears throat> you find the sweet spot that works best for, and everybody's got their own way of doing it. But uh, you you cup the strings lightly to create a, 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 de a more deadened sound, a chunkier, more percussive sound. So rather than this, okay, the notes are one thing, but how you're playing it will give you you know more of a vibe that you're you're after if you want to cop bang is that you're bending the 10th right, fret so. and then right underneath it on top of it you're playing the 10th fret of the of the skinny high e string like that they sound kind of you know angus's tone on this is really pure uh everybody knows that he plays an sg and uh marshall amps right if you don't have a marshall that's fine uh one thing is his amplifier doesn't sound really 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 high gain right you know there's a lot of clarity a lot That's of articulation Paul, bridge pick up and um a marshall amp on about five uh six and everything is pretty much straight up uh at about six and that's the sound you get you know it's just the sound of rock and roll so hope you dig it <laughs> and uh i hope you learned something from this if you please do um click the like button and don't forget to shoot me your comments, and um, please subscribe. I'll see you soon for some more uh, lessons. Thanks again, guys. Take care.